If you're just starting out MIG welding, here are the top 10 MIG welding questions for beginners to get the ball rolling. So the short answer is yes and no. To MIG weld and get the best, cleanest welds possible, you will need a shielding gas that is a mix of 75% argon and 25% CO2 for welding steel and stainless. To weld aluminum with a spool gun, you'll have to use 100% argon. Both are available at most welding supply stores. Now you can use these machines without a bottle by using flux core wire. The flux core wire has a coating on it that offers shielding properties similar to the bottle of shielding gas. You just won't get as nice of welds and it'll be more difficult to weld sheet metal. Plus, you'll have to clean the welds because there may be a coating from the flux core wire. But flux core welding is a nice alternative to MIG welding if you don't have access to a bottle. Eastwood MIG and multi-process machines can weld either MIG or flux core wire. Yes, you can weld aluminum with a spool gun. A spool gun holds the aluminum wire. This is necessary because it's difficult to push aluminum wire through a long cable without it kinking because the aluminum is soft and pliable. Eastwood MIG and multi-process machines can weld aluminum with a spool gun. The spool gun comes free with the purchase of a MIG-175, but they're also available for other units. You will need 100% argon gas to weld aluminum. Yes, of course it is. Make sure you're grounded to good clean metal and try to be as close as you can to the spot you're welding. You may need to use a grinder or sander to clean an area to attach the ground if you're working on metal that's rusty or painted. A quality ground clamp is also important. Make sure the ground clamp has a cable that goes through the clamp like the one from Eastwood. So if you're having trouble dialing in the welder, always check the chart on the welder and make adjustments to the wire speed and amperage. Make sure you're holding the torch at the right angle. Try adjusting the speed that you're moving the torch, maybe slightly faster or slower. Make sure you have the shooting gas turned on and make sure it's set to the correct CFH flow rate. Also, don't forget that a breeze can affect the welds and make them porous because it blows away the shielding gas. So if there's a door open or if you have a fan running, it could affect the quality of your welds. First, turn on the gas. Then turn on the welder. Check the chart and set the wire speed and amperage. Attach the ground clamp, get into position, Pull the trigger and begin welding. Typically, you will push weld when MIG welding. Make sure the helmet is rated for your welding amperage, but a general rule of thumb is that a 10 shade is good for most MIG welding applications. For higher amperage welding, you should consider a helmet that goes up to shade 13. Also, if you're planning on TIG welding and you'll be running over 150 amps, which is common, you will need a helmet with a 13 shade. I highly recommend an auto darkening helmet because you can see through the lens so you can see what you're doing and when you strike the arc to weld, the lens instantly goes dark to protect your eyes. This is much easier for holding pieces or getting in position and it'll be a huge help when welding. This is typically based on a personal preference and the job you're doing. MIG is very easy to learn, it is a very quick, clean process, and since it's a continuous spool of wire, you don't lose time changing filler rods. TIG is also fairly easy to learn, although it's not as easy as MIG welding, and it provides a very clean weld at low heat, making it great for sheet metal or precision welding. The welds are also softer than MIG welds, which allows you to hammer weld the bead, meaning you can hit it with a hammer to flatten and form it which is nice when you're working with sheet metal. If you need to grind the weld bead, there is less to grind with TIG welding. These are parts that commonly wear out, like the contact tips and nozzles. These are easily replaced and available at Eastwood. 
If you want to know the size wire you need, simply refer to the chart on the welder. Typically, 0.023 wire is used for welding sheet metal and you will use 0.030 for larger, thicker metals. Make sure the groove in the roller matches the wire size. You will also need to change the contact tip because it needs to be large enough for the wire to feed through. Finally, refer to the settings chart for any changes to wire feed or voltage settings. There you have it, the top 10 beginner MIG welder questions that we get here at Eastwood. Hopefully this gives you the confidence to get back in the shop and fire up the machine. For more information or for more instructional material, visit eastwood.com. <laughs>